Hello everybody. The eruption on the Reykjanes Peninsula has started and it surfaced in the area that we've been paying close attention to since November 10th. Unfortunately, it bears yet another difficult name, Sund Nukagigar. Despite a much worse location than in previous eruptions, the way the eruption is progressing is really fortunate. The public is currently not allowed near the eruption site, only the media and scientists. The size of this eruption is many times greater than any of the previous three eruptions on the Reykjanes Peninsula, and with the beginning being a lot more hectic, offering some insane views. Since the eruption's beginning, around 10 pm on December 18th, its power has decreased a lot, by at least 75%, which is to be expected. The public is currently not allowed near the eruption site, only the media and scientists, as the area is really dangerous with the possibility of new fissures opening considered rather high. So, will this be a short eruption? Is the town of Grindavík or the Blue Lagoon in danger? Well, let's check out the details. Let's begin by talking about the first few moments before and after the eruption started. A few hours before the eruption started, Uplift had just reached the same heights it was at before the massive subsidence event on November 10th, according to GPS equipment located near the Blue Lagoon. A few hours after that happened, an earthquake swarm began around 9 pm at the dike that formed during that event on November 10th. A little over an hour later, the eruption began and with power. The moment it started was captured by live stream cameras, which show that it must have just shot up as the sky is lit up instantly. Then, in the first minutes of the eruption, the fissure expanded. This expansion continued for three to four hours with the fissure reaching a maximum length of 4 kilometers, that is double the combined length of all the fissures in the past three eruptions. The lava fountain show in the beginning was spectacular to say the least, with a lot of livestream cameras in the area to capture it. The lava fountains were reaching heights of over 100 meters in the first few hours, but have now dropped down to around 30 meters. The output during the initial hours is estimated to have been between 200 and 400 cubic meters per second. Now that's a real number. For comparison, the largest effusive eruption in Iceland in centuries, Holurhaun, which erupted in 2014, had an output of around 350 cubic meters per second in its initial stages. So the eruption we're dealing with now is no joke. After these first couple of hours, the eruption started to slow down, which is to be expected. The location of this eruption is not like the one we've gotten familiar with in the past three years, as it threatens both a town and a really important geothermal plant. Fortunately, the town of Grindavík is safe if the eruption continues this way, as all the vents in the south end of the fissure, which is closest to Grindavík, have closed meaning there aren't any active lava flows there. The power plant is also safe as the barriers are completed. Currently, most of the lava is flowing east towards Mount Fagradalsfjall, which is perfect, but there are also two active lava flows which are headed towards the road connecting Grindavík to the main road. That is a bit of a concern, but as of the making of this video, reports suggest that the lava has almost reached half the way to the road. It hasn't even been 24 hours since the eruption began and it has already surpassed the previous two eruptions in lava field size and those both lasted for more than three weeks. There's no official number yet, but based on drone footage and satellite images from 3 a.m. tonight, the lava field may already be larger than four square kilometers, which is insane. For anyone that has a booked flight to Iceland, you don't have to worry much about the eruption delaying your flight, as with all the eruptions so far on the peninsula, no ash has been emitted. Even though there are no ash emissions from this eruption, we're not completely void of long-range effects, as eruptions like these emit gas. And since this eruption is really large, 
is the mesh a lot. The gas is carried by the wind and currently areas in the south of Iceland are affected but the amounts are not to be worried about yet. Tomorrow, the capital is expected to receive its dose of gas. The amounts here are again not dangerous, but can cause discomfort in for example eyes or the throat. It is recommended to have closed windows when the gas is present. Does all this data tell us anything about the length of the eruption? Well, not really. But by looking at lava fields in the area around the Schwarzenke volcano system, it becomes apparent that lava fields here do get pretty large. With lava fields from eruptions like Eldwerp being over 20 square kilometers. If those eruptions followed a similar path to this one, powerful initial stages shortly followed by decreased output, they probably had to have erupted for at least a month. Another hint we can get is the fact that in the exact area of this eruption, 2,800 years ago, a 4 km long fissure erupted, creating a 15 square km lava field. So, if this eruption is going to cover an area that big at the current lava output, which is expected to be somewhere between 25 and 50 cubic meters per second, it would take some time. At least three weeks. But as always, when it comes to geology, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. I just want to thank everyone who made it here. Definitely leave any speculations and questions in the comments. It's always fun to read them. Other than that, I just hope you enjoyed, hope to see most of you in the next video, and thanks for watching.